it's uh it's been a while all i can say is don't buy a mail order tune <clears throat> obviously i haven't figured out my issue because the people won't help me retune the car because there's clearly an issue with the tune i've checked everything on this car so my solution is this is the obd1 harness for my car obd1 and then i got this link that i'm putting in since link only makes ecus for obd1 ecus i had to convert my car over to an obd1 and to do that you need an obd D1 engine harness in all these OBD1 sensors. So I got knock, knock sensors, cam shaft sensor, and cam shaft sensor. To put the link in, you have to uh, get your red label DME, take out the old one. As you can see, that's a link. And you drill a couple holes because this has a built in map sensor. So don't have to run a math, which is sick. And then this is like the tuning cable that I'm gonna route into the car. And then I'm gonna, once it's in there, I'll book a dyno and get this thing juice, juiced up. All right, so this is the OBD1 harness and this is the OBD2 coolant temp uh, sensor plug. So what you're doing is you take the brown yellow, brown violet, hook it up to the brown violet, brown yellow, coolant temp on there. And then for the other coolant temp, you take the brown red, brown gray, and you hook it up to other coolant temp, brown red, brown. And then you'll have your one coolant temp because OBD2 it has one coolant temp. OBD1 has two coolant temps, so you can do that, jump that, instead of buying a $50 harness. And uh, wait, wait, we got that all, this coolant temp sensor all wired in. And on the OBD1, they have the distributor, like, block for all the power cables. Um, in a different location, so I took the one from the OBD2 and put it in here so I didn't have to move this block. I'll show you. So you don't have to move this block. On the OBD1 location, it's like right here, but I have a catch can that mounting right here, so I'm just reuse the old wires. I got the harness back in, um, majority of the way, everything's connected. I got it like Tempt out for that. I don't have the ECU in yet. Um, yeah, so I got like the power block, whatever, running there, running there, kind of tucked everything back there. And then that's why I extended it so I didn't have to move it. Wow, just looks so clean in there now. Um, I got everything connected, tied down, zip tied, nice and neat. Nothing's gonna move around. I put the manifold back in, need to bolt it down. Um, got everything plugged in, I got the IAC plugged in, I hope it's the right sensor because it didn't really reach, but got it to work. Um, yeah, just need to bolt everything up, got the ECU in, tucked in behind, tucked in the glove box, behind the glove box, whatnot. Need to wire up the AFR to the ECU, got like an expansion harness for the ECU. Um... Got this oil filter housing in, new one. I polished it <laughs> a little bit. Um, and then I got, this is the OBD1 crankcase vent, whatever you want to call it. So I'll have a little crankcase vent coming out to here to the catch can over there. And then this is for the vacuum line for the boost gauge and the verter valve. Um, I need to cut my valve cover a little bit so I can get the vanity cover on once I get everything bolted up because this is just it's just sitting there you know? just hanging out whatever you get the point I got 
these PBM spherical trailing bushings because the solid ones are trash. The solid, like any solid bushing is trash because you need the trailing arm to flex so you have movement in the suspension and it can like go and go like that whatever whatever the trailing arm does that way you have more grip you know because if it's solid bushing it's all bushing it ain't it ain't moving it's just that's it you know you need that movement i've come to find out so we're not smart enough to get the car running on the the link ECU, so we're doing mechanical work instead. We're replacing my trailing arm bushings. These are 19s or something. My butt cracks out. Oh, God. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> this sculpture is made out of paper. That's crazy. How's it not ripped? Oh my god. <coughs> no, that these don't work with these brackets. Um, they don't have as much of an indent as the OEM ones. See how these have a bigger like, indent? These allow it to heim. And this one's like pretty much flat. So I got these OEM ones and I notched it. So it would be similar. Right here. So you still have the adjustment right here. Right there, right there, right there, you know? And then I'll have the high as well. So we're gonna bolt these back up and then torque it up. Throw back in there. And then I got a ripped axle boot over there. So I'm gonna replace that. Come back and look it, you know. And see, you got all that movement. Look at that. As you can see, the boot's gone. I mean, they're old axles, anyways. Hopefully, that just that one stays together. I don't know. Whatever. As you can see, my diff is leaking. I should have got the seal for this. Whatever. I plan on going to an LSD when I upgrade the clutches in it, but as a time being, this thing does the job. Maybe I'll reseal this, maybe I won't. Um, but I am gonna fix this first. So all you do, as I've seen, is you hit this end cap off. Let's see. This piece, which is right here. You hit that off, and then there's a snap ring in there, and the whole thing goes then you slide the new one on, and then you call it a day. Put the grease in it. Go hit, go hit some jams, you know. But yeah, this thing's this thing's seen its days for sure. Comes right up. Definitely not this, but it works. Kinda. <sighs> like factory, kinda. Got a new boot. All greased up. Those trailing arm bushings are in. The trailing arm bushings in all the way towed out as much as they go. We'll see how that goes. Um, but it will work down. The car is back on the ground. Um, it looks it looks like this. Looks pretty all right. We'll come in. Not 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 gonna kill anybody. You know. Old Tolan, old Tolan. I don't know. I actually don't know how much is going on. Um, I'm going to do one of those toe plate alignment things when he's, you know, another day. I don't really feel like doing it right now. Um, 
I forget if I ever left off on this whole situation. Um, so the ECU is in, OBD1 is working. Um, I don't know how to work Link. I had someone help me try and get like a base map situated so I can at least like start the car. Um, kind of works, kind of doesn't. The two and the tune tuner I was gonna bring this to is about a month out, so that stinks. That's gonna be the end of this video. I don't know how this video is gonna come together. It's all over the place, you know, between making this OBD1, changing the sensors around, those Heim joint things for the trailing arm. And then getting the factory trailing on bracket because the other ones didn't work. But I don't know, it's alright, you know, the season's coming to a start. I really love to enjoy this car, but I don't know, we'll see how things go. Check, check. Alright, uh, it's been a minute. Got the E36 tuned. Didn't really take any videos because I'm socially awkward. And filming like this in front of people, terrible. Can't even do it in front of my friends. Awkward. Whatever. Um, get the car tuned. My Turbo Mike. Shout out Turbo Mike. Car made 330 wheel and like 280 torque. Pretty sweet. Um, I have like one clip of it. But the car works. Definitely need some cooling to keep the IETs down. I was thinking of doing like a menthol. Menthol? Yeah, menthol injection. Uh, meth injection kit. Okay. Because I was talking to some guys and they say it keeps it a lot cooler, keeps it from detonating, and you can make more power. But I'm just going to keep it at 330, stock head gasket, stock head studs, and just want the cooling to be down, you know, so we can get as many laps as we need. Um, so I'll put that clip at the end of this. And that's it for this video. Bye.